Hi, I'm Brady Volpe with the Volpe Firm, and I'm here to talk to you about one of the most exciting things going on in the cable industry. We presented this at this year's Cable Tech Expo 2013 in Atlanta, Georgia. The topic is DOCSIS pre-equalization. And what we're doing with DOCSIS pre-equalization is actually quite amazing. So if I told you we could take a typical cable modem, analyze some information in that cable modem, and tell you, hey, you have an, imp an impairment in your DOCSIS network, we can tell you what type of impairment you have, and we can tell you where that impairment is located. That would be pretty exciting, right? Well, it's true, and we can do it, and we can do it with some software. So that's what we're doing, and, and I'm going to tell you how we can do it and, and why we can do it in the next 10 minutes of this presentation. So let's walk through it. First, we're going to lay the baseline of what DOCSIS pre-equalization is. It's simply a feature in cable modems that have been around pretty much since cable modems got started. What it is, is in a cable modem, if we have some type of impairment, like you see in the lower left-hand side of the screen, this is a cable modem transmission when it arrives at the CMTS. The CMTS says, hey, there's something wrong with this signal, and I'm going to have a difficult time demodulating this signal. If we have pre-equalization enabled on our CMTS, the CMTS will communicate with a cable modem and say, I'd like you to pre-distort the signal that you're transmitting so that when a signal arrives at the CMTS, it's going to look like this, this signal, the image on the right-hand side of the screen. It'll be nice and flat. So basically what happened here is there was some impairment in my upstream. First, the image on the left, the cable modem was arriving at the CMTS with roll-off. The CMTS said, I don't like this roll-off. I'm going to tell the cable modem to pre-distort the signal so when that signal arrives at the CMTS, it's nice and flat. This makes the signal easier for the CMTS to demodulate the information. So normally, we'd be really happy with just the fact that we're getting an improved signal-to-noise ratio, an improved MER at the CMTS. Sometimes our SNR improves by as much as 2 to 10 dB in the upstream. So that's pretty cool. But we can do better. We can analyze the equalization information in the cable modem and we can estimate or analyze and say, hey, what is the frequency response between the cable modem and the CMTS? So that's pretty cool. We can take it one step further. We can look at that frequency response, do some more digital signals processing, and say, what is the distance from the cable modem to the impairment? We can determine the type of impairment. And we have many cable modems in our plant, so if there's a common impairment between the cable modems and the CMTS, we can get a very accurate estimate of where the location of that impairment is. We collect these coefficients over time. We can start to analyze the types of impairments that are happening and when they're happening. So extremely a powerful information we're getting. How are we doing this? Well, we're looking at the equalizer in a cable modem. And what is an equalizer? Well, an equalizer is a bunch of taps. So I, I want to make sure that we understand that a tap is not always a tap. On the left-hand side of the screen, I'm showing you a very, very simple tap. A tap is made up of a delay line, which is that little box with a Z to the power of minus 1, and a couple of gain stages, which are the little triangles pointing down, and they go into a summation. This is a, a, a little simple equalizer. On the right-hand side, I have a mainline tap. So I've used tap twice. The mainline tap is what we use to drop coaxial cables into subscribers' homes. So we have very common terminology here, and I want to make sure that we understand that on the left, 
These pre-EQ taps are used for signal processing, and on the right, that mainline tap that faded out, that's used for dropping coax cables to subscribers' homes. Equalizer taps are very different than mainline taps, and we want to make sure that that terminology is not mixed up because we're going to be using it and seeing a lot. A DOCSIS cable modem has 24 taps in it. So this is a very complex image, and I don't want to get into detail of what's going on here, but I just want to show the architecture of it to help you understand there's a, a lot of complexity in a DOCSIS 2.0 cable modem with 24 taps that gives us the ability to shape the signal before we pre-distort it and transmit it to the CMTS. So we'll, we'll avoid the boring math for now. Now I have a bit of a demonstration here and what this demonstration is going to show a cable modem on the left hand side is going to transmit data to the CMTS on the right hand side. Between the cable modem and the CMTS, I have some noise and I have some impairments that are going to create reflections. On the bottom of the screen, on the left hand side, I'm going to have a constellation without pre-equalization. In the middle, we have our pre-equalization taps that are going to go into effect. And on the right hand side, I have a constellation that we're going to see happening with after pre-equalization. So we'll start this thing running. Now, what we see at first, we have our impairment here. And that impairment is going to cause some degradation of the signal. So without pre-equalization and after pre-equalization, right now we see both constellations looking pretty bad. In the middle, we see our equalizer starting to take effect. Notice the constellation on the right-hand side. It's starting to get better. And that's because our equalizer is kicking in. The CMTS is telling our cable modem, hey, I don't like what I'm seeing at the CMTS. So make some adjustments. Pre-equalize your transmissions to me and adjust those equalizer taps. And as those equalizer taps get bigger and bigger and bigger, my pre-equalized constellation at the CMTS gets better and better and better. But notice the constellation without pre-equalization, it just never gets better it's always going to be bad. So this is a great demonstration to show how demodulation at the CMTS without pre-equalization is horrible, but demodulation with pre-equalization is really, really good. So now we take and make an SNMP query to that cable modem and we get its tap values. We get the values from the pre-equalizer and we see that on this screen. There's 24 of those tap values. We do some digital signal processing of those taps, and now we can get the frequency response between the cable modem and the CMTS. So this is what the cable modem is doing to pre-distort the signal before it transmits to the CMTS. And we can see we have a, a lot of frequency unflatness. There's, it's not a flat frequency response between the cable modem and the CMTS. We're going to analyze this data and we're going to look at this particular cable modem and we can see at a, just a couple of the circled areas there we have a high level of micro reflections and there's a time domain reflectometer of 338.6 feet. So now we've got some information. We know there's an impairment. We have a distance to the impairment. We got some really great information off of this. So we have this information. What do we do now? You know, we say, wow, this is very, very powerful. DOCSIS pre-equalization is something that's available in all CMTSs. We really recommend that you use DOCSIS 2.0 or higher cable modems when we're using pre-equalization. The reason being DOCSIS 1X cable modems only have eight pre-equalizer taps in them, whereas DOCSIS 2 modems have 24 taps. And we all know that 24 is better than eight. It just gives you better resolution when you're doing your pre-equalization, your pre-distortion in the upstream. Now applications that are going to leverage this type of information is absolutely going to change the way as an industry that we do plant maintenance. 
we have these cable modems everywhere in the network. Suddenly these cable modems, they turn into probes. They turn in a way for us to look at the return path and say, oh, suddenly I have a splitter that's reversed. And that reverse splitter is causing the equalizer to have a lot of stressed out taps. I can see I have micro reflections, I have group delay on that, and oh, by the way, the distance that I'm getting back from that TDR is 50 feet. So I know that that's an in-house problem. I can send a technician directly to that house to fix the problem. On the other hand, I might have a bunch of cable modems that are reporting a TDR of 500 feet. So it doesn't make sense to send technicians to a whole bunch of homes that have a problem that's not inside the home. Instead, I'm going to send them to an outside plant impairment that has a common distance of 500 feet away. And when I fix that common problem, I've suddenly fixed a whole bunch of cable modems that had the same impairment. So we can very intelligently dispatch technicians either to a single cable modem that has a single issue or dispatch a technician to a common location that is impacting a bunch of cable modems. So we're really getting smart about where we're dispatching our technicians, our workforce, and how we're impacting a bunch of subscribers in a positive way. Now there's another thing I didn't cover, which is called full band capture, and it's a way that we can turn a cable modem into a spectrum analyzer. That's another really, really cool piece of technology that I'll be covering at a later date. So thanks for your time. This is really cool information, really cool things happening in the cable industry, and a lot of neat stuff going on. Goodbye. Oh, <laughs>